Hi, I'm Philip Myers of Pemi Consulting. I want to show you a news clipping of a water tank that exploded in Lemoore, California last week. One person was killed and one person was injured. I won't get into all the regulations, standards, codes, best practices, and so on that would have prevented this incident, but rather point out a principle that would prevent every one of these types of incidences and save many lives. Specifically, I'm talking about hot work on tanks and how this type of incident can always be prevented. Let's watch the event now. Tonight, new surveillance video shows the moment a 1.5 million gallon water tank explodes in Lemoore. As a contractor started a weld, an explosion ensued. The tank separated from the ground, lifted up approximately 70 feet vertically before a tsunami occurred, causing major infrastructure damage to well In Lamore, Kirsten Mitchell, KC24, local news that matters. The following ideas are my opinions only. I don't want to guess at what happened because the information is preliminary and confusing, and investigators are studying this incident, and the news says that it may take several months to do so. But a few things are obvious. If you look closely at the video, you will see luminosity from the de deflagration light up the water as the tank rockets away. This was definitely an overpressure of the tank caused by a vapor space explosion or deflagration. Also, to lift a tank like this 70 feet into the air would require many cubic feet of flammable gas mixtures confined in the tank. Since water was in the tank, the vapor space would have to have been above the water and under the roof. The tank appears to be a column-supported fixed roof tank. The center column and rafters that support the roof plates are shown here. I don't know to what standard this tank was built, but the shell and roof maintained the pressure as the tank overpressurized from the deflagration and the vapor space and launched upward like a rocket. While this is not a petroleum tank, this particular failure mode is exactly why the API standard for fixed roof tanks have an option to use a so-called frangible roof. When a tank with a frangible roof is overpressurized, the top of the tank blows off instead of the bottom as shown in the photo. This prevents the contents from spraying out everywhere and the only thing that happens is that the roof membrane gets launched instead of the roof plus the shell plus the loss of liquid contents like we saw here. Now I had promised to explain how to prevent this. The answer is simple. Always, always do atmospheric testing using a qualified person before doing any hot work on any pipe, container, tank, vessel, or anything that is a confined space. It's simple. Never assume that a confined space is free of hazardous vapors. Toxic and flammable vapors can be odorless and invisible and not detectable without testing equipment explicitly designed for purpose. Hopefully you can save someone's life with the lessons presented today, maybe your own. Feel free to contact me at PEMI Consulting where we supply expert engineering support to the energy sector. Thank you.